Let's start off with a word of prayer, shall we? Through heaven and the Lord, thanks for letting us all be here. Thank you for giving me the impression to come here and speak on your behalf. Please give me your words as I speak here today. Praise your name. Amen. Um, let's look at the, um, turn me down a little. Uh, looking at the scripture reading, I first remember when I heard this passage, it was um, in Sabbath school, and I remember um, Charlene reading this passage, and my reaction was probably not a very common one, but I thought, there's no way. There's no way that he could just get forgiven that quickly like that. Um, I had a real big problem when I was a kid with uh, forgiveness, especially myself. And um, I don't know if anyone here is a perfectionist, but anytime I make a mistake, I have a really hard time when I was a kid forgiving myself. I can tell you exactly most of my mistakes. I can't tell you a lot of my success, but I can tell you a lot of my mistakes. Give you an example. I've accomplished a lot as a marching drill, as a marcher and a drill instructor, but the biggest memory that sticks in my head is my second year as a marching drill instructor. We were marching fancy drill, and in the beginning of um, our drill routine, we always do our required basic marches. Um, basic simple things like left phase, right phase, uh, present arms, things of that nature, very things that you, you don't even really worry about, barely practicing them. We um, do it in a certain order every time when we practice. And when we got on stage, third call in, I'm supposed to call a right face, and I say left face. And the problem with the call is it's not like a normal march where you have a break before you say march, and I could not call it back. And as soon as I said it, I knew I made a mistake because everyone's natural thought is to turn right first. So when I turned left, I immediately had the most regret because two people turned right because that's what we usually do. And it cost us that first place. And we got second that, we got silver that year. And I remember being so angry at the time. And um, it would, those kind of mistakes, I've learned to accept those things. But it took me a very long time. And the biggest struggle I had as a kid was with forgiveness. And it really came because of a, something that happened that I did in um, second grade. Um, I went to First Lynn Academy from kindergarten through second grade. And um, the thing I most regret is this one day, um, we're in class. Um, the day before, I had finally completed all the multiplication tables. I was the only student to do that, something I normally taught in third grade, but I did it in second grade, and I was the only kid to do it, and I got a special pencil for it. And um, I was so proud of this pencil. I, had this com I did this accomplishment, and um, Every day, there's a, um, someone, it's a student's job, we do it on rotation, that they pick up all the pencils on the table in the beginning of, in the, beginning of the morning to sharpen them. That way we have less disruptions during class because the sharpener was pretty loud. And I had accidentally placed the pencil. I had, never, I, I had planned on never using that pencil because it had a nice, it had all the multiplication tables on the pencil, and I loved looking at it. And I accidentally placed it on the desk in the morning. And... This girl, whose turn it was to sharpen the pencils, had picked it up. And I had not noticed, because I was talking to someone at the time. And I remember she was walking, and let's say this is the pencil on the desk, and she had put it back. And I remember seeing that it was sharpened, and part of the times tables was gone. And I have a very problem, I had a big problem controlling my emotions when I was a kid. And I honestly couldn't even tell you what happened next. I was so angry that I, I blacked out. My memory blacked out what happened next. Next thing I remember, I was in another room with the assistant principal. And it, she was asking me why I had 
hit this girl. And I, I couldn't even remember. I was devastated. And um, she had explained to me that apparently the other students and what the teacher said is that I got so angry that I hit this girl in the face. And she was hurt pretty badly. Her lip was busted. And I, I remember thinking, I can't even remember it happening. I got so angry. I had lost so much control that I couldn't even remember my own actions doing it. And it really, it really hurt me because I couldn't believe I did something like that. And for the next 10 years, until I made the decision to get baptized in senior year of high school, I struggled with the decision of thinking to myself whether I was an evil person or not. Because I had done such a horrible thing. I hit a defenseless girl. She was just doing her job. She, was, she thought she was helping me out. I hit her. And I remember I avoided her like the plague after that happened. I was so ashamed. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't speak to her. And she even came to, she, she used to come to this church once every couple of months. Even, when she, even years after, I avoided her. I couldn't, I couldn't even look in her, I couldn't look in her face. And it, I had such regret that for those next 10 years, I would ponder my guilt at least once to twice a week for an hour at least at, t- at a time. And it, it, it really weighed on me. I, I couldn't forgive myself for it. I was, so, I was so upset with myself that I had lost this control. And it really made me decide that I need to really focus on self-control. And I, I made sure I told myself I would never raise my fist towards someone again. And... It really was probably senior year when I really dove a lot more into the Bible and really came to the understanding that God is there and he was on that, when he was on the cross, he was there to die for our sins, to take our burdens away. And it's really when I started understanding that why he forgave the, the thief. You know, I I'd always had a problem with a thief because when you get crucified, it's not because you stole a piece of candy from the 7-Eleven. It's a big boy crime that you did. The crucifixion, the crucifixion is a horrible way to go. And um, it's not a sentence that they use lightly. So I thought he shouldn't be forgiven so lightly, and I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't forgive myself so lightly if I did some kind of crime. And it's when I realized that at that moment, he was one of the few people that really recognized what Jesus was doing on the cross, that he was there to die for our sins. Out of all the people in the crowd, he was the one person in in all kinds of pain, and he somehow recognized that. And I thought, that's truly what it's about, is that humans, all of us, we go along this path, um, and I, I wonder how it's like to be God sometimes. He's just watching us through our life, and we, he watches us make a bonehead mistake that we know we shouldn't be doing. And he's like, and we get, come to God and ask forgiveness, and he's just there with open arms. He's never laughing at you. He doesn't make fun of you, even though he knows, he knows that you could have done better. He doesn't scold you. He comes there and says, I forgive you. And that's why I really um, love God. It's because no matter how many times he... I, I make a mistake, is I know if I come to God and I am sorry, he will forgive me. And that he'll take that burden because he can handle it. And me as a human, I'm not strong enough to hold those burdens within me, to carry all that weight, because it will crush me eventually. And it's really what gave me a lot of relief, and is when I finally accepted that God is there to take my sins. And... When we're on this path, it's um, like, uh, I, the way I like to think about it is sometimes in these TV shows, they like to put a spotlight on someone and have like, if they, they're making like a mistake and everyone's laughing at them. 
but God's light's way different. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel when you're, when you're in a cave and you're lost. And you see that sunlight, that warmth coming out of the tunnel. And you can see the hope that there's out of that, you can get out of that cave. And he's leading you back onto the path that you should be on. No matter how many times that we may astray, he's there with open arms. Um, if you can turn to me with, to 1 John... First uh, John chapter one verse five, and it reads. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And um, I remember reading this passage, and and a couple others, and it was really at that moment, it's like, wow, the Lord is truly powerful and truly amazing. Because I know I don't have that kind of patience. I know I've I've seen people, like, make a, a mistake, and you just get so angry, like, how did you do that? And, or, and I get angry with myself. It's like, how could I make that mistake? How could you have done that? And it's like I, I, I have a struggle letting things go, understanding. I remember as a kid, I refused, I know, I refused to believe that humans make mistakes. I told myself, that's, that's not a thing. Don't believe that. It's like um, so I, I wanted to tell myself that if I believed hard enough that you can be perfect, sooner or later you can get there. And until I let that go, it was very stressful, I can tell you, because I don't know if you ever tried that, but you fell a lot. <laughs> and, man, I struggle with that. And the Lord just keeps on working. That's the greatest part. And I think that's just the biggest reason why I come to church is because I come here knowing there's open arms. It's a loving environment here. And God loves me no matter how many mistakes I do. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. I know people in this world that don't know God. And you can see the struggle with them. Because they have all those burdens with them. They don't have someone to go to. And it's so sad. Because they don't have to be, they can't pray. They, they can't give those burdens to anyone. They, they have them on their shoulders. You can see how much it weighs on some people and how stressed some people are. And it's, you can see, like, how impactful it is to have a God that you can rely on compared to being on this path by yourself. Going through this world, such a dangerous place by yourself, truly must be a scary thing that I'm glad I don't know what it's like. And I thank God every day for it. And and I hope that's one of the reasons why you love God too. And I want to just close with saying, no matter how many of those mistakes, if you have one of those big ones like I did, like we just spent years I mean, we were in Sabbath school, we were talking about uh, um, how a um, tragedy can affect your mind for long term. It can't, it's like a scar. And honestly, I have that exact experience. I was laughing in my head because I was like, wow, I'm going to be talking about that in about, in about an hour. And um, it really is. But if you really do go to God with the full intent that you are sorry, 
He will heal you. He will help you get through that sin. So if you have one of those burdens on you, please pray to God because he'll take care of it. And uh, we'll be closing with song number 110.